What's up, Nigu Nation? It's Eric Reese, and welcome to Nigu TV Remote Edition. I'm hanging out in the Joy Factory because of this darn virus that I'm so tired of. Um, so everything is remote, and so today we have an awesome guest, Caitlin Sandino Hogan. Welcome to Nigu TV. Oh, I am thrilled to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you because I need to say, first and foremost, happy anniversary. Anniversary? Yeah, now I know recently you celebrated an anniversary. <laughs> yes. With your hubby. Yes. Yeah, we love Pete. Yes, we do. But you have an anniversary with us in May, which is just in a couple days, because we're shooting this in late April. But uh, it'll be eight years since you um, went into Children's Hospital of Orange County to help spread joy to kids fighting cancer. And obviously, prior to that, you had actually met Jess and all that. Um, but happy anniversary. Thank you I, for giving your life to us and the kids fighting cancer for eight years. That is one of the coolest anniversaries to celebrate. And I mean, on top of that, I mean, eight years ago, my life was changed too. When you really put it into perspective, I mean, that was just an absolutely surreal experience. Man, I get like the goosebumps right now. It's hard not to be sentimental, emotional about that. So thank you for highlighting that. Sometimes you get so distracted by everything, you don't just slow down and celebrate those milestones. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it was amazing to have you show up at the swimathon with Jesse, meet her, you know, encourage her, um, you know, and then you brought some of your other USA swimming friends, and that was awesome. Um, but then, you know, you you and I chatted and you said, yeah, I'd love to go into the hospital. Um, so from what you can remember, um, uh, what was that first experience like? Cause I know that you shared with me personally, it was, it was kind of nerve wracking or a little mm -hmm. nervous just in terms of you've never had done it before. Right. Right. Yeah. I feel like I'm already like tearing up. Um, I feel like I had, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I, had, I feel like it was like almost twofold of nervous energy. Um, you know, obviously I felt like connection with you and Stacy when I had first met you, but some time passed before this opportunity came together. So part of my nervousness was, oh my gosh, I can't believe Stacy and Eric are already going to the hospital to do this just so shortly after Jesse had gone to heaven. And then I was almost like, didn't feel like I didn't really know you to how I know you now. So it's like, how do you embrace almost strangers that is going through this horrific family experience and you want to not only try to comfort them, like, what do you say? Like, what do I say to you? Um, and then at the same time, I didn't want to let you down either letting me come into this experience, you know, representing Jesse, your family, her legacy. So that was kind of like my first kind of wave of anxiousness or nerves. And then the second one being, I've never done this before. I've never gone to a children's hospital before. I, I um, hadn't really been around people with cancer too much, let alone children. So I didn't know what to expect emotionally yeah. or even what I was walking into. But as soon as I did that first visit, everything just melted away. Um, it it was almost like addicting, just being able to experience an odd sense of joy. You know, everybody's like, oh, isn't it so sad? Don't you get sad? And it's like, these kids are pumped to get a joy jar. Like they are full of smiles most times than not. And even if you come into the room and they're a little apprehensive of you in the beginning, or maybe a little standoffish, by the time you give them that just boost of joy, they're your best friend, yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like the the tears, if there was some turn to smiles or, you know, the hesitation turns to giggling and it's just, um, each room is so different. The bond is always so different. It do, I think it depends on age and just the, the outgoingness of a child, but that joy jar, like is an icebreaker in the start of a relationship. And it, it was oh, still hard. I mean, one of the most surreal experiences, your first one, I don't think I'll ever forget 
but each time I would go after that, it was like, no, that was the best one. No, that was the best one. Like they're all the best ones. And how many have you done so many years? Like, I think we're like 160 ish. I think. Well. Yeah, I wish it would have kept an exact, but I think we we were for a little bit. Then it was just like 150 plus, so then 160, right. and it's just not not to not like each one's not special but it gets to the point where you're like i've done a lot and it's not about keeping record really you know um, oh, sure. yeah but it's just it's um just a huge part is what's such a huge part of my life still is so um not everybody obviously gets to go in and deliver joy to right. kids right um but if somebody was watching this thinking okay i might be in a position to donate and support joy jars um do it <laughs> do it <laughs> yeah what, what what have you seen the impact a jar filled with toys does for a child fighting cancer you literally get to brighten a child's day and i feel like when you brighten a child's day you're also brightening the whole family's day right my mom always says this expression is you're only as happy as your unhappiest child is that how is the right phrasing so it's like you think about if you're a mom and dad or you know the caregiver and you have a little one suffering you're at that level emotionally too so when you see your child full with joy then that brings joy into your life it's that ripple effect so not only are you impacting one child that could be as then it moves on to a sibling or you know mom and dad aunt uncle grandma and grandpa my heart always is like oh grandma and grandpa really have a hard time during this you know so it is it is i just can't think of a bigger um rewarding feeling knowing that you have that potential to make the difference big and small right some people can give twenty dollars some people can give two hundred dollars some can give two hundred thousand dollars you know it's just whatever that that is that you can give you have a sense of i did something good today and i think more more than ever we need that right now right it's almost selfish too you're like you're making somebody else feel good but then you're feeling good that's a win-win right. here people it's a win-win <laughs> um so i've got so many questions I can <laughs> um uh for those that are watching this maybe and you know thinking okay who's caitlin sandino <laughs> obviously you are a national spokesperson you've worked with us for you know or partnered with us for eight years because we don't pay you anything um <laughs> but we love having you um and uh but what if somebody was here trying to figure out like okay what made what made caitlin caitlin um what 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 kind of athlete um, were you? I know you still are an athlete. You'll never not be an athlete. <laughs> but um, what allowed you to represent Team USA? You know, I think first and foremost, um, just never being afraid to fail. And I think that ultimately stems from how I was raised. Um, and I say that because I found myself behind the blocks and getting ready to race, not worried not worried if my self-worth was determined how this race was going to go. I knew that my parents loved me unconditionally, no matter what first place, fourth place, eighth place, 16th didn't finish. My love was not determined on that race. And when you have that confidence in your worth or your love that you're going to receive, you know, from the most significant people in your life, you have nothing to lose. Right. Um, you know, my parents are always very against, they would see swimmers or just athletes like after a bad bad race they'd start crying it's like why are you crying it's just a <laughs> swim meet you know and in our sport there's another one there's another one there's a lot of swim meets and there's a lot of races to come so i feel like that was kind of like the first thing for me was just i wasn't afraid to fail and i loved to race absolutely loved to race i was a gamer i don't care what day it is what time it is who you are let's go you know and again i think that's wasn't afraid and I was never really nervous. I would get anxious. I would get, I, I wrote when I was little, I have, mommy, I have butterflies in my tummy. Like my tummy's, you know, going back and forth. And I always felt that. And, and sometimes depending on the severity of the race, my mom's like, yeah, I think I'll just leave you alone. Cause I'm like locked in. Right. Um, but I also, you know, um, I, I've done some coaching in, in, you know, as since retiring and I, you can see the kids that have it and they don't just like the fire in their eyes. And yeah. I, I had that fire. And I, as a coach or as a mentor, you can't really 
quote unquote teach that. I think it's something you have or you don't have. I think it's a way we're wired. And I definitely had that fire. Um, sometimes it was hotter than others. You know, you go through just not being your best and maybe you're just a little off or you've gone through some injuries or illnesses or just fatigue or burnout. So that fire tends to shine brighter or uh, be more lit, if you will. Um, but I just believe that's something I had. And then when it comes down to the actual athleticism, you know, I was a jock growing up. I did all sports. Um, I'm good on land. I'm good on water. As far as sometimes they say a lot of swimmers can't do anything on land. They're like fish out of water, but I was, you know, really, um, advanced soccer player and I did, did cross country and whatnot. And I just had those athletic genes. And when it actually specifically came down to swimming, um, my coaches said I had a really natural feel for the water. So just that catch, that relationship in there, my husband says this because I have massive hands, so that's my paddles right there. I'm very self-conscious now. I had no idea what big hands I had. <laughs> but they're my paddles. I tell every time he brings it up, I'm like, yeah, well, I got medals with these bad boys. Um, speaking, so of kind of, speaking of medals, how many medals have you won in the Olympics? So I have four Olympic medals. I have one. Whoa, gold. four! <laughs> yes Caitlin, oh my olympic medalist Thanks. and uh that's awesome so what olympics did you represent team usa in so i completed my first olympics in 2000 in sydney australia which is phenomenal to be in a country where they just swimming's their number one sport like you are a rock star if you're somewhere there i was 17 years old for that one which is just mind-blowing i was going into my senior year of high school and then my second Olympics were in 2004 in Athens, Greece, which is just iconic to go back where it all started. Um, and then, you know, I tried for, uh, the goal was to make a hat trick to qualify for the 2008 Olympic Games and just wasn't in the cards. A lot of um, injuries and illnesses and then straight before just leading right up to it, just blew out my knee, had a severe upper respiratory uh, infection. It was like, all right, this is the end. And I knew I wanted 2008 to be the end. I wanted, I wanted it to be at the Olympics and not the Olympic trials, but life does not go as planned. And, um, you know, I, I have no regrets, um, very bittersweet career, highs, lows, everything in between. Um, but I think it makes my story really relatable. You know, I feel like a lot of people think you know, Olympians are these supernatural human beings and, you know, they, they're put on this pedestal and it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm not discrediting that accomplishment, but at the same time, I'm a person just like you and I, and I put my pants on the same way and, you know, I worked really hard and, um, things don't always go as planned. So that's even for Olympians, you know, and I just think we, I have no shame in sharing the, the lows because I mean, the highs are fun to talk about, but the lows make it, make you human and make you relatable. Well, I think that's one of the things that we've always loved about you is, yes, I can say without a doubt, you're one of the most confident young yes. ladies that I've ever come in contact with, but you're not cocky. No, um, you. And you're incredibly compassionate. And so you realize that you have a, you had a platform back there as a member of the USA Olympic team and you did everything you could with that. And now you have a new platform, you're writing books, you're speaking, mm -hmm. you're mentoring, you're coaching. Um, but at the end of the day, you're, you're really inspiring people. And it's awesome to yeah. see not only kids fighting cancer, but um, you know, I, I remember looking back on social media and seeing you speaking to groups of women and you know, um, so many people needing to be encouraged to never ever give up as Jess would say, but in their own journey because we all have a different journey and mm -hmm. our journeys do comes with highs and lows. I mean, it's a roller coaster. Life is a roller coaster. Um, so what have, what have you started to learn about yourself as you've transitioned out of being an Olympic swimmer? Yeah, it's so, so funny you bring that up because I was just going to say, you know, I'm obviously, there's so many different, there's so many different ways to express how and why I'm so grateful for the Jesse, Re Jesse Reese Foundation and my role with it. But one of the reasons that really sticks out to me, because, you know, for a little bit after I was done swimming, I wanted nothing to do with it. And I wanted to be, you know, writing a new chapter and getting outside the swimming world and something that I did for so long. And, you know, I, I had gone through some pretty bad lows that maybe just kind of want to shy away from the sport for some quite some time. And 
it wasn't that I was a, um, bashful or embarrassed of being Olympian, but I wanted to prove I could be more than that. And it wasn't until we synced up and like you shared, not just everybody can go into a hospital visit, right? Like you need some type of almost street cred to get you in the door to visit these children. Otherwise you'd have strangers all over the place coming into the hospital. So I felt like once I got synced up with, with your family, I started reowning what I had accomplished as an athlete, but only using that so much, as you said, I was a competitive athlete, but I'm a compassionate person. So it was almost like my ticket in the door were these medals, but now I can strip down from those medals and just show that I want to care for these kids. But it's almost like that, that golden key in, right? You know, so many of my friends, oh, I wish I could do hospital visits with you. It's like, oh, they don't just let anybody in hospital. And I don't mean to be like just anybody, but like there has to be protocol, right? Sure, sure. And so I feel like it wasn't until I really embraced that role as a national spokesperson with my swimming accomplishment where I re, I don't even know the right word, like almost like was proud of it again. You know, like I've had some races in my career that I'm like, I was so proud in that moment. And then when I was done, I was like, man, that didn't go like I wanted to. And then you're just kind of pushed the side. And then it wasn't until kind of years later, like watching the 2012 Olympics, like from home or being at the 2016 Olympics as a spectator and like some sponsorship roles. I'm like, I did this. Like, this is awesome. I can't believe I did this. You know, and it's like almost like you reappreciate what you did because in the moment you kind of like, you're just grinding through, you're just getting through it. So I feel like that, that transition after sports you hear about so much is very challenging for a lot of people. And I was lost for a while too. I mean, when we sat down together, I'm like, what do I do from here? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you're trying to find, what am I good at? How can I contribute to society? You know, I, I have a college degree, but my resume shows I'm just a really good swimmer. And then I, I mean, I, I'm just so grateful for how our, our paths come across. And I mean, not only did I get to to a point where I felt really comfortable again in my own shoes but like I when I share with people it wasn't until I synced up with you that I felt like my passion cup was getting filled up again Mm. because for a while it was like kind of low I wasn't having a full cup after swimming because that's what all my passion was in and then it was like that search to find it and then once I was with Nigu it was like now my passion cup was full again. Wow, that's such a great story. Thank you. I'm so glad that your your passion cup is full. <laughs> um, so one last question before we jump, because I know you got a busy day, and uh, um, even you know in COVID, you're you know doing things you can do to help people and um, leveraging technology like we are and yes. stuff. So, um, but you know, as I you know joked at earlier, but you know we've been blessed to have so many all-stars and you being our national spokesperson, but we don't pay our all-stars. You guys choose to do this. Um, why? What, what is your why when it comes to helping kids fighting cancer? I feel like from a young age, I always enjoyed helping people. I always enjoyed from little things like helping the elderly get their groceries or bagging it, you know, just little, just little tiny things to like bigger things. And, you know, I will, I will say, I I know I'm probably speaking for most of the all-stars within the foundation and just professional athletes in general, you know, we get asked to do a lot and we get asked to show up for a number of causes And I swear I have like sucker written on my forehead because I said yes to all of them, which I never regretted that. But at the same time, I never really felt severely connected. I felt very um, surface level with numerous causes, which is great. But what are you really doing? You're like showing up, you're waving, you're maybe sending a couple autographs, you're on an event for an hour and two. But what do you really know about that specific cause? Like, could you really and honestly tell people that it means a lot to you? Or do you really know the ins and out about the foundation? Like how involved are you? Are you just showing up so you can like 
post a picture on social media or be in the newspaper, which, you know, we, we actually have gone across some of those experiences that hospitals are used to that. Like celebrities are like, Hey, I'm here picture. And then they're out. Right. It's like, no, we want to, we want to put on the mask and we'll scrub in. Like we are going to get nitty gritty with this, you know? And so for me, it was like, once I got to know you and Stacy and Shea and JT, and I felt like because of that relationship with your whole family and, you know, Aunt Kimmy and Nana and Papa, it was just like, then I felt like I actually really knew Jesse even more. Because even though I met her, it was very short and sweet and she wasn't feeling well. And then spending more significant time with you, it's like, I know about this foundation. It's like, I know where people's donations are going. I know how you spend your money. And I know how this affects families and children. And like, I, I can commit to it fully when the other ones, it was like, Hey, bye. You know, and then you go on to the next cause, which I think is great. Like I, I, there's so many causes that I have a a heart for, but it's like, I must say it's like, Nico's like my home cause, you know, it's like the one closest to home. I mean, you know, you married my husband and I, you baptized my, my, my niece and soon my sister, like you're the, the office is like a block down from my parents' house. Like it's, it's part of my family. It's my Nigu family. So that's why I do it. I feel like it's something that I have ownership with. Like I actually truly believe in spreading the cause and telling people about Nigu and I enjoy you know, when I do my motivational talks, I always end with Jesse and how Jesse's Nigu motto, how it pertained to my life and how other people can use it. And, you know, it's one of those things where I don't feel almost like a fraud. You know what I mean? Like, no, this is something I'm really a part of. It's not just right. something to say I'm a part of. Uh, and that means a lot to me. I want to be authentic in all that I do, especially something so serious and, and moving and emotional um, as the Jess Reese Foundation. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that it means a lot to you because you mean a lot to us. Uh-huh. I know, and I can feel that. And that's another thing. It's like, you guys are so authentic and you're so real and you have no problem saying where it's a good day or a bad day. I feel like a lot of times people just pretend like everything's good. And that's what I think was so, I, I know that I mean a lot to you and that's, a great feeling, right? Because I don't question that, you know, and that's what's so amazing about this organization is that everybody feels like family in this group. Well, you are definitely part of our family and uh, we are so grateful. We love you. We love Pete. Um, <laughs> everybody loves Pete. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You, you, you know, usually I tell the guy, you know, you're out here to cover it, I think on this one, Pete went out here. <laughs> But uh, yes, Pete is an amazing guy. But um, Caitlin, thanks for jumping in to uh, Nigu TV Remote and uh, just giving us a glimpse into your heart and your life. We love, we do love you. We're grateful for you, and we can't wait for this uh, virus to go away so we can get you to 200 children's hospitals. Yes. I know I'm having withdrawals right now. I need to fill that fashion cup back up. I literally do. I miss it when I don't get to go for a while. Well, we'll we'll definitely work on that. And uh, thanks again for being by our side for the last eight years. Oh, absolutely. Love you you too. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.